No wow. Shai. Shai. Senator Ekwere Madu, the wife, Dr. J in the UK. A former Deputy Senate President of Nigeria, Senator E.K. Ekwere Madu, his wife Beatrice, and their middleman doctor, Obinna Obeta, has been jailed for organ trafficking by the Central Criminal Court in Old Bailey, UK. The couple and the 25-year-old daughter, Sonia, were accused of taking a 21-year-old street trader from Lagos to UK with the intent to harvest his kidney. At a sentencing hearing on Friday, May 5th, Ekwere Madu was jailed for nine years and eight months. His wife, Beatrice, was sentenced to four years and six months imprisonment, while Obeta received a 10-year prison term. The judge, Justice Johnson, told the defendants, in each of your cases, the offense you committed is so serious that neither a fine nor a community sentence can be justified. So to fully understand the above jail terms, the United Kingdom counts night and day as separate days. So in rest respect, he will serve approximately five years. Wife will serve two and a half. The poor doctor will serve 5.3 years. Early release may be possible on good behavior. Listen to more of the news in, in detail from a TV correspondent from UK courts. Ekwere Madu has just been jailed for nine years and eight months. He, of course, had two co-defendants. There were three, but we know that Sonia Ekwere Madu was found not guilty in March. Uh, but his wife, Beatrice, today has been sentenced to four years and six months in prison, while Obina, or better, described as the middleman, has received a 10-year prison term. Now, as to be expected, the entire uh, uh, court um, gallery was full. Uh, we had media from across the spectrum. In fact, something that was only introduced into the British court this year um, was the fact that the, the judge's ruling was filmed live on a very popular uh, channel here, Sky News. Uh, so the entirety of this country have been following um, this case. Of course, we know from following this case extensively few days, Laddie, where we have had um, a significant number of letters of clemency. Uh, this was um, spoken of by the defence lawyer. And in fact, uh, the judge did actually say one of the reasons why um, he reduced the sentence for the senator was because of those letters. He received 51 in total, including from the former uh, president, Olusegun Obasanjo, um, describing Ikwere Madu as a good man, a decent man, um, a lawyer of significance, somebody who spent a long time at the top of politics. His fall from grace couldn't be um, any more glaring or any more significant. And he said he took that into consideration um, and reduced his sentence. But he said, um, and disagreeing with what the statements were from the defence team, uh, that he knew all along what he was doing, um, considering he was so intelligent, was so fundamental mental to the birthing of democracy in Nigeria and in fact ECOWAS and he himself he said was part of uh, drafting the piece of legislature which actually made this human trafficking illegal in Nigeria um, so he said he knew what he was doing he was culpable and he had no option but to give him uh, this nine years and eight months sentence and now as has been described and as we know this is not a normal case. In fact, this is a landmark trial in the UK. Nobody in this country has ever been uh, charged and prosecuted and convicted of Section 2 of the Modern Slavery Act of 2015. And that the intent, and let's talk about the intent, the intent was, of course, to save the life of their daughter, Sonia. Sonia, of course, was in court today. I uh, sat beside her during the proceedings. I saw her and spoke to her briefly after the ruling. Um, she was absolutely devastated. In fact, both the prosecution lawyer, Casey Hugh Davis, as well as the judge, did say everybody, not just parents, but everybody following the case, do have some sympathy for her. And in fact, 
the defence lawyer laddie did ask the, the court to perhaps suspend the sentence of her mother, of Beatrice, because, of course, this costs, in terms of her kidney dialysis, a significant amount of money. And with both parents uh, being in jail, how would they be able to afford it? Um, the the defence lawyer for Beatrice Aquaramadu pleaded for a suspended sentence that obviously hasn't happened. She's been sentenced to four years and six months in prison. I'm sure we've got our producers going now through the time they've spent in custody, because of course they've spent a significant amount of time in custody. This is going to be taken into account. So with the four years and six months, for example, that Beatrice got, and because of the laws in this country, um, she will uh, spend half of that sentence in prison and the rest on license where you're tagged and you have a curfew and of course taken into account the 100 or so days that they've been um, in court. I've got to tell you it was very dramatic, very uh, tense at times. Um, Laddie, as you know, the Channel's television in London has been covering the entirety of the case, um, including when it first came into the public domain in the summer of last year. I've got to tell you, looking at the senator today, he did look like a broken man. He's clearly lost a significant amount of weight. He is not sleeping. Um, there was a large cohort of a delegation of senators and House of Representatives that have flown in. I did speak to a few of them on record, and I can tell you for a fact that the senator is suffering uh, from significant mental health issues. Um, I won't go into the details of it, uh, but they are very afraid of him trying to take his own life. That is how serious this is. I did speak to the Sunrise team this morning. I was asked whether or not the letters and the pleading of clemency would be taken into account. I wasn't sure of that, but it did make a difference. The judge said in his summary um, that he read each and every individual of those 51 letters. And he did say about all three of the defendants that they were of good character and that this is an isolated case and it is landmark um, in um, its fruition. So yes, just to, just to re-emphasize the breaking news that's just happened just less than uh, 30 minutes ago, the former Deputy Senate President, uh, just a couple of years ago, one of the most powerful men, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa, Ike Ikwaramadu, has been jailed today at the Old Bailey uh, for nine years and eight months. His wife, Beatrice, has been sentenced to four years and six months in prison, while Dr. Obina Obeta, the middleman in this case, has been sentenced to 10 years. Uh, Juliana, thank you very much for your reporting and for your continuous coverage of this story. It's breaking news out of uh, London, and we'll keep tabs on it. Uh, but before you go, perhaps I can just ask you about, are there any options of appeal available to the senator and his wife? I absolutely uh, believe so, Laddie. And I think just for the fact that this is a landmark case in the United Kingdom, I think anybody that's been following news about the issues the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister have been having about um, cross-channel trafficking and the issue that they have of human traffickers getting people into this uh, country, that's, that's a huge issue. In fact, if we go and uh, listen or if I reflect back to some of the um, details that the uh, defence lawyer of Beatrice was saying he was using cases as examples of individuals, human traffickers, who fall under the modern slavery act of raping women, bringing women into uh, this country where they are subject uh, to horrendous conditions, years of solitude, um, financial uh, deprivation. This is not the case in this uh, uh, trial. 
this is a case of a victim of circumstance. Certainly, a crime has been committed here. But does the senator and does this conspiracy warrant over 10 years in prison or up to 10 years in prison. Another significant factor um, which I, I should mention is the victim who, uh, just to be clear and just to make it clear uh, uh, for our channel, still cannot be named for legal reasons. There is a reporting restriction on this individual's uh, name. He was, he was uh, shown to be a liar. He lied on several occasions. Uh, we were shown uh, two pieces of crucial evidence where he handed himself into police on the 5th of May. So in fact, as, uh, as time would have it, exactly a year ago today, this victim handed himself into police. He lied to police saying that he was 15 years old, that he had no family, um, that his parents died when he was very young. We know that's not the case anymore. He also lied on a second occasion uh, to police. We saw that video evidence. Is this individual somebody of good character? Well, that's to, that's something uh, for the um, uh, defence lawyers to try and appeal in court. Certainly, uh, there will be a, a, an appeal. There is a outrage, and not just uh, from the delegation that flew in, uh, but from those who believe that the intent was never evil, and the fact that the act wasn't taken out. Um, so yes, this is, um, it's, it's a case that has stirred plenty of emotion, not least from those in the public gallery, but also the defence lawyers, and including the judge, who, like I said in his ruling, did say that the senator is a man of good character. Just very briefly as well, Laddie, just to mention in terms of appeal, can the senator afford to appeal this case? Um, he has spent a ridiculous amount of money um, on his legal counsel, not only for himself, but of course for his wife and Sonia, um, trying to undergo private medical care in this country costs a significant amount of money. We know that there are several parts of his fortune that have been seized or under question uh, by the EFCC that were mentioned several times uh, during court. In fact, um, his own lawyer did say that he's upwards of a million pounds in debt and that to fund this case he has had to borrow money left right and center so it's obvious to presume that yes of course they would be appealing um, this ruling but can the senator afford it another question uh, for the nigerian government is was it too little too late should these pleas of clemency have arrived before uh, the new year, um, laddie. Why was it at the last stage that we did start seeing these letters? In fact, I think the most significant letter we saw at the beginning was from the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo. The, the, the judge said he took this into account. Perhaps this, this information was to have got to the Crown Prosecution Service prior to um, the case going to court we could have been in um, a different uh, situation. But again, to reiterate the breaking news from the top of the hour, uh, the senator has been jailed for nine years and eight months. Beatrice Ekweramadu has been jailed for four years and six months. And Obina Obeta, the middleman in this organ harvesting trial, has been sentenced to 10 years in prison at the Old Bailey today. Thank you so very much, Juliana Olainka, our London Bureau Chief, reporting there on the breaking story out of the British capital that uh, former Deputy Senate President Ike Kwaramadu has been sentenced to nine years and eight months uh, as a result of his conviction over the organ harvesting case, uh, which has been ongoing uh, in uh, the United Kingdom. His wife got, uh, that's Beatrice, got uh, four years and six months. Uh, and Obina Obetin, Dr. Obina Obetin, who is described as the middleman in the case, uh, was sentenced to 10 years uh, in prison. Thank you very much, Juliana, for your reporting.
And so at that point, uh, our breaking story, of course, is that Deputy Senate President Ike Kwermadu uh, has received a sentence uh, alongside his wife, Beatrice, uh, over the organ harvesting case uh, they've been undergoing. The trial has been ongoing at the Old Bailey in London. For now, uh, we return you to our regular programming, but of course, we'll have news at the top of the hour. Thanks for staying tuned. The applicable starting points are custodial sentences of 10 years in the case of Abina Abeta, 10 years and six months in the case of E.K. Ekremadu, and six years in the case of Beatrice Ekremadu. Abina Abeta, stand up, please. There are aggravating features in your case. You deliberately targeted a victim who was particularly vulnerable due to his young age, his isolation from his immediate family, and his poverty. After the conspiracy to exploit C was thwarted, you continued to try and find another person to be exploited in the same way. As against that, you have no previous convictions, and you are a person of good character.